It's Sway in the Morning Sports Report on Shade 45. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, this is a special day here on Shade 45. Yeah. And Sirius XM, in general, Heather B., um, we're going to uh, have an altered sports report this morning. And that's fine. For this news, it's all good. Yes. And Steve Cohen, the executive vice president of sports here at uh, Sirius XM, is a good friend of mine. And uh, for a long time, we've been talking about our boxing presence here. Yep. You notice I can include my name in I our hear, yeah, boxing you presence. Keep saying it. At Sirius XM, I feel like I'm a pillar here. Heather, you a pillar here? You and Steve, you kept saying our, 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 uh-huh. because it's our. Yes, okay. I think y'all both feed off a horse, though. Yeah, yeah, but this is true. <laughs> Big Horse is our boxing guru. Uh, uh, but, you know, Randy Gordon, Jerry Cooney, um, all of these guys on Sirius XM Fight Nation channel, um, I've actually hosted some fights with them. I'm not a boxing commentator, but I just love boxing. Uh, and Steve Cohen was telling me about this show that's going to be on Sirius XM in the zone, um, which is um, our boxing partner down there just about now. The zone is. Um, and two, two of some of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to the sweet science of the sport. Uh, both of which I've heard and watched them work. Their commentary is right on point. I learn every time I hear them talk. Uh, one of them I actually been in the gym with. He saw me training. Um, he knew that um, that I had a skill set that I, if I had <laughs> chosen to go that route, perhaps I could have fought. You know, maybe in the middleweight division. I don't oh, know, light wow, heavyweight. Sway. You know, um, and they're here today to celebrate their debut <laughs> show. Making up stuff at twelve noon to three p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Um, on Sirius XM Fight Nation, channel 156, please welcome AK and Barack from the AK and Barack show. They are here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome them. What up, fellas? Thank you, thank you. Good morning. Appreciate it. And it's Ak, but everybody says AK when they read it. I was like <laughs> Ak and Barack. That's yes, what I thought. Ak and Barack. I, I mean, I like just MP. said Ak and Barack, but when you read it, it looks like AK. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Me throwing punches at me, Ak. <laughs> nah, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm ducking those punches. Um, congratulations on the show. Thank you. Now, how long y'all been doing this? Wow. Man, uh, for about roughly 10 years or something like something that. Like that. A little yeah. under that. Yeah, under that well, maybe nine years. Yeah, yeah. what? what a long journey. Long, did you grow up watching yeah, boxing? I, yeah, I was a fighter. I was an amateur fighter. I uh-huh. fought about 60, 70 amateur fights. My uh-huh. brother was signed to Don King for four years, so I was around the sport, like on the business side, uh-huh. being around him. And uh, But I always had a passion for it. You know, I kind of fell into it like nine years ago, trying to host this little internet uh, hip hop show. And I just started talking about boxing on the show. It wasn't uh-huh. even a boxing show. And then. Some boxing websites started to notice and kind of just grew wings and it t- took off from there. I love your commentary, but and that makes sense. Like when you come from boxing, it's it's better to talk about. That's why when you watch, you know Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley and them guys talk about basketball, right. you just feel like okay, I'm getting insider information. What was your record as an amateur? I was about like sixty five and ten. But you know when you're a kid, like you don't really. You worry about records. It's about staying busy, okay. especially when you're losing a lot. You okay, know? okay. What you say, Nock was losing a lot? <laughs> oh well, no, I, I, that's I, what I, heard. I just said 65, <laughs> 65 and 10. And so yeah. obviously that's you not know, a losing but, record. No, yeah, you know, but damn. <laughs> it might be a little stretch, right? Yo, yo, yeah. Barack, did you fight? Yeah, I've I won a lot of martial arts tournaments. I wish it was only 70 some fights, but when I was young, like in that era, it was like black exploitation. Like my, uh-huh. my parents exploited me. I was fighting. <laughs> Every weekend, like for real, really, you know. So you know, it's 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 a combat sport. So you're always gonna have love for fighting, you know. So for me to make that transition into boxing was, it was easy. Natural. Okay, natural, right? So can we talk some boxing? Of course, let's, let's talk some it. boxing, Absolutely. man. First of all, congratulations on your show. Thank you. What Thank are you gonna you. bring to this show that boxing doesn't have? Culture. I, I mean, I guess I guess that's why Barack and I kind of like took the fast road, you know, we got a lot of opportunities quick because generally, like, boxing analysts that tend to be, like, older men mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, that just focus on the sport, but we, you know, we we both from Brooklyn, born mm-hmm. and raised, and okay. we brought a little culture, lifestyle into the commentary, and so the young fighters, they related to us. When mm-hmm. we sat down, you know, with the Danny Garcias, Adrian Broners, and, and so on and so forth, it was more like a conversation with, with, with your peer. We knew about the music, the fashion, so the, the interview stood out opposed to 
the other journalists. The other journalists, but but not to take anything away from the OGs. No, no, you know not what I mean? at all. Yeah. Of course not. Uh, they paved the way. Uh, but uh, and they opened the door for what we're seeing today. Um, let me ask you this: Tomorrow is a big fight. That's right. Deontay Wilder versus Ortiz, mm-hmm. right? Uh, to me, Ortiz has given Deontay his toughest competition, in my opinion, um, to date that I could recall. You know, I've never seen Deontay rocked the way Ortiz rocked him. And in fact, many people believe if uh, this is going, this argument that Deontay got a few seconds of rest when a, when a referee stopped him. I don't know what he was checking his cuts, checking his oil on the face. I don't know what it was. <laughs> and uh, and they believe that those moments helped save Deontay. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Um, what people do forget is that in the fifth round, Luis Ortiz was actually saved by the bell. Okay. You know, so it's not like, you know, they were just trying to give Deontay some kind of, you know, some kind of win factor, you know, a little space. In reality, with today's ethic in boxing, this year we've had probably the most death, you know, in, in the a lot of years, mm-hmm. you know. So today's ethic is a little bit different where you got to check to make sure that that fight is okay. So that little five seconds, six seconds, I don't think that saved him from anything. Nah. And a heavyweight division, like – Deontay's been hurt before that fight. He's been wobbled several times. These guys are so big and they hit so hard. When you see a guy hurt in the heavyweight division, you can't make too much of it. One punch can knock any of those guys out at any time. Uh So the fact that he stood up and then go down, that said a lot about Deontay as well. Do you think in terms of skill set that um, Ortiz is a more fundamental boxer, a better boxer than Deontay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has an amateur career. In Cuba, that's all they do is fight, Uh boxing. So he he probably had like 400 amateur fights. So technically... Technically, maybe, definitely better. Maybe more than that because he's about sixty-five years old. Oh, come on, come on, man, come on, Barack. He said he's forty. I, I don't, I don't know, man. I, where's his birth certificate? You ever check it? Uh, man, do you gonna do that birthism <laughs> thing? They yeah. did that to Obama, yeah. Barack. Man, hey, hey. Barack, hey. Please, please let that man make let his money. Man, he's forty, on. I believe. Him. He's making it. He's making it, but he's sixty-five. He, he gonna go right. Social Security right after that. Oh, man. That sounds like boxing hate right yeah, there. Hate. Back to the hate. Well, no, I, we know y'all show launched uh, last Monday, but I'm coming from another perspective. I live in a house with, the, to me, like one of the biggest boxing fans ever. Yes. And he always wants to have something at the house every time there's a fight going on. And y'all opinion is men, Sway included. What makes a good boxing party? Like, if you go to somebody's house and they watching a fight, what makes a good fight party? Wings. Food. Just wings and wings. food? Wings. Absolutely. Nah, but w- you you got to have people. <laughs> who know the sport nah. though okay. nah, you know, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate when you got a party with people that don't know the sport and they rooting for the underdog <laughs> just to be rooting <laughs> no, for the nah, underdog nah, nah, but no, you really no, don't my, know my, my pet peeve is music when the main event starts shut, shut the, the music, music off yeah. oh. I don't, it's not a party it's a party before when the fight starts we watch so the in fight. the undercards, it's okay to play the music. Not really. It depends on who's fighting. It depends fighting. on early, sometimes the undercards be stacked. Yeah, hold may, up, hold maybe up. early. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> There's no good. point in the undercard or the main event that music should be played. This no is true. Point. I don't we'll, even like people talking we'll, to me. Really. Not, yeah, don't yeah, ask me. Yeah, qu- well, yeah. what we, we do because Horace and I always have parties. They go to fight. They oh, go to yeah. uh, Sway's house. Oh, we But this eighty house. inch, I heard like 80, 90. 90. I, I don't 90. know what you're talking. They don't about. even make a ninety <laughs> inch. Eighty inch. It's special. Yeah, eighty. Don't you talk see how he turns his so back. You got a nine and a number. Barack. Oh, Barack. So it's no music allowed. No, not not. And you know when the music comes in, in between fights. Like in between you fights, you got the DJ some, there. Yeah, yeah because yeah. they they just showing some rotated footage that they've been showing all week. Right. Oh. You know, you play music, we talk, we chop it up. You might eat. That's when you eat, you drink, or whatever you're gonna do, whatever that is. Um, but not during the fight. Don't. T- that's why our fight parties are a handful of. It's me, horse, rich nice, rich nice, and Mike Muse. That's it. That's you, it. You don't invite too many people. Hell no. No, I stay downstairs. You're, you're a real fight fan. <laughs> yes, yeah, because to your point, maybe like you said, you don't like people there that don't know the sport. Right. Wow, man. That, that, I'm okay with that because no. I go in on them. No. I, I, I'm okay with people that don't know the sport. I remember my mother was Ooh. like, she. I was, me and her were about to fight one night because she was like, I knew Buster Douglas was going to win. I was so hurt. <laughs> I was so hurt. I was like, no. Nobody thought Buster Douglas. No. Not one person. Earth. People oh, just Earth. say Not that, though. Barack Mama did. Oh, Buster <laughs> didn't even think he was <laughs> <laughs> Like, I won? What the what fuck? What the hell happened? <laughs> okay, so oh, let me ask you guys this. Um, um, the, the welterweight division right now. Right. Who's the number one fighter in the welterweight division? In my opinion... 
Terrence Bud Crawford. Okay. Now, now a lot of people, you know, back to differ. They they felt Spence Errol Spence was. We all know he just had in the, he got into a, a serious car accident. Is he so recovered yet? Apparently, I mean, we we know him, so uh, they saying he's okay. But we don't know. You don't know. There's rumors about him having back issues. But we'll see once he gets back to training and get back in the ring. Hopefully, he gets back to 100%. Yeah, God bless Errol Spence, man. I'm glad he survived glad he's that. Okay, he's an amazing guy, man. I'm glad for him, his family, his friends and fans. But go ahead. So you think T-Bud can beat Spence Jr.? I just think that he does a little bit more in the ring. I'm not saying he can beat him. It's a 50-50 fight, okay. right? But in terms of, like, what the guy can do in the ring, I think Bud, he's a switch that he can right, switch that he can fight lefty, righty. He can make adjustments. I think Arrow has a one or two ways he can fight, even though it's super ex- effective, and he obviously hasn't lost. I just think that's a dream fight. I couldn't tell you who will win right now. Pacquiao, um, you got to give that man credit. You know, oh, man. Uh, you know, he 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 fought one time and put him down one time. Uh, Keith Thurman, and he's still there. You can't ignore Pacquiao. Like, the experience, the skill set, even though he's older, but that experience, can he beat a T-Bud Crawford? Can he beat a Errol Spence Jr.? See, that's that's a a good question. Um, I think people are forgetting about Pacquiao. Yeah. I think, um, first of all, the king of the division is Errol Spence. Yeah. You know, because he beat the biggest names. You know, but, you know, I think Ock is speaking from his heart, knowing that T-Bud is one of the best fighters in the world. He has the most intangibles. But we can't forget about Manny Pacquiao. Before there was Errol Spence, there was Keith Thurman. He took a little layoff. Mm -hmm. So he was the king. So Manny just came up out of nowhere and 40 years old and just beat the former king. So he has to be up there somewhere with Errol Spence. Yeah. But can he beat him? No. I don't know. No. I don't. I don't want to just say he's gonna get washed because his speed and his footwork is unmatched even uh, to this day. He can't be Errol Spence. He's too small. He's too small. Too small. That's see, what that, I, see, I he, thought he was. I always, I knew he can beat Keith Thurman. I never was a huge Keith Thurman fan. I, I you know, I felt that Errol. I, I feel like Errol can be, beat Keith. So I knew Pacquiao have a good chance, but it's just a different story. Errol Spence. Pacquiao beat. Um, Oscar De La Hoya, they said Pacquiao was too small. Yes. Margarito, they said Pacquiao right. was too small. Right. Uh, damn, his name just escaped me. A Puerto Rican fighter. Cotto. 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 Beat knocked Cotto. him out. Knocked Cotto out. Yes. And Cotto in, in was the, strong. In the, in the yes. 12th round, all right? Yes. Uh, but, but he knocked Doesn't Cotto, matter. Cotto, you know, uh, Mayweather didn't knock Cotto out. Right. No, you're right, you're right. I just support my Puerto Rican fighters. I saw ah. what you did there right there. I saw what you did. And he's a... That's it. Yeah. And he goes back and forth with me. Okay. Um, this... So, Manny Pacquiao cannot be den- ignored. No, so that's all I'm saying. I don't think he could be Spence, but he cannot be ignored and think that's going to be some kind of easy fight. Okay, cool. Trace, you want to chime in? She became a big boxing fan. So oh, just hearing all the talk and hearing about the fool. Since, since, since this morning? Yeah, since when? the fool. She liked the oh, fight okay. parties, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, yeah, it was an expedited route that I took to being a boxing fan. <laughs> but here I am with a contribution. So, I'm reading that Floyd Mayweather announced on his Instagram that he's returning in 2020. I don't know oh. if he's trolling us. But you yeah. never know what I, that means, yeah, you know, though, with Floyd. Yeah, he, he, okay. His his whole life on Instagram is really like a troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? On and off, you know? Mm-hmm. So you never really know. He's- it, it could. There was rumors about him uh, uh, having an exhibition match, so it could be the exhibition match that he's supposed right. to be getting paid $10 million for in Japan somewhere, mm. if I'm not mistaken. So... Who knows? What exactly is an exhibition? You know, for someone who just entered the ring of being a boxing fan, what's an exhibition It's an unofficial fight. Uh Uh-huh. It's just an unofficial fight where there's no real boxing rules. Okay. You know, that's it. It doesn't go against your professional record. Not at all. Ah. If he he was to lose this exhibition fight, it wouldn't affect his 50-and-old professional record. It could actually be against anybody, an actor, anybody Yeah, it's not a serious fight. It's not not a sanctioned battle. Okay. uh, Ortiz and Wilder, how do y'all, what's your prediction? I see an early knockout by Wilder. I think whenever he comes back for a rematch, he's in a different mode. And now I know personally he's 100% in this fight. Uh huh. And his, his his confidence level is, you know, unmatched. So I think he's going to knock Ortiz out early. As and I, and as- I like Ortiz. I know you're a big fan of Ortiz. Yeah. But I think, you know, when he comes back for rematches, 
He's unstoppable. As much as I want to disagree with this guy, I'm going to have to go with Wilder gonna, as well. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah. yeah, never agree. Um, <laughs> I am a big fan of Ortiz, but uh, Wild, I'm a, the biggest fan of uh, Deontay Wilder oh, okay. in, in that division. Uh, Deontay would come on our show before people knew who he That's was. That's a fact. And, and, and for that reason, I'm always I'm always going to root for right. Deontay. Right. You know, I don't care who it is right. he fights. I'm always going to root for him for Same that here. reason. Same yeah. Here. Um, man, this is fun, man. Yeah. Y'all, Great I'm, sport. I'm so happy. Happy for you guys, the Ock and Barack show. Um, also, we've been on the zone for a year. Yeah. We have a segment on the zone called The Pull Up, where we f- locate internet trolls that troll boxers, and then we find somebody who knows them and pull up on them with the fighter that they were trolling. Right. So look out for that. It's like a hit segment. So yeah, y'all getting you tro- people knocked out? What y'all doing? <laughs> just sca- it's just a troll intervention. We're just scaring them a little bit. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? the Check out the last the last one we did horse with Zab loves Judah. It. Yo, Yo, horse loves it. You still yeah. mad, man. Something going on with you. You need therapy, Aqua. Right. Well, got- you look, he's smiling. We're going to pull up. Listen, yeah, listen. We, we, we Keep need, that same energy. We need them fans to have a little more respect for fighters. Yeah, well, speaking about troll intervention, I do have an update with Floyd. He actually said he's going to be working with Dana White on a quote another spectacular event so I'm not sure oh, if man. that gives more credit I don't no. want to see him and oh, Connor maybe, no, <laughs> maybe, maybe Khabib maybe it's Khabib it's a guy that beat Connor uh-huh. they were talking about that as well all those uh, UFC mixed martial art uh, fighters, step, if, uh, they just doing it. They just trying to get a check. They know they're That's not going to box. Absolutely. You're not going to outbox Floyd Mayweather. Right. I'm not. I'm not mad at it, but I'm not looking for it to be competitive in any way. Nah. 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 Let me ask y'all this real quick before you go. Floyd Mayweather in his prime could be any welterweight on the planet fighting today. I agree. Yes. And wow. I agree. You, you got to see it. Skills pay the bills, but <laughs> it's it's intellect. Yeah, intellect wins fights. Mm-hmm. You know, not not brawn intellect. He's not. He was never really the fastest fighter. He wasn't the strongest fighter. He was just the smartest fighter. You don't think he was the quickest fighter? No, the, the, Manny Pacquiao's faster than him. Andre Berto, Zab Judah showed that he was faster than him. And I'm saying it here, Anthony. It's, Josh, it's not about speed. Anthony Zab jo- Judah was faster than him. Anthony Josh was gonna avenge his. You loss. remember that fight? I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember it. I remember it. <laughs> Zab Judah was faster than him. Absolutely. Yeah, he was. It's it's about intellect. Ak, you agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean, is that being faster than Floyd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but Floyd is just so much smarter in the ring. You know, what I mean, he's he's gonna go down as probably the best fighter ever. So y'all would rather a boring fight between two like intellectuals per se, but then there's no like action going on. Mm, that's the action. It is. See, you you say boring, but <laughs> yeah. you, you you know like women like what we call chick flicks. Okay. Because it, it stirs your emotion. Mm. You know, because you're heavily invested in that. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. We're heavily invested in the sports. When we see a chess match, okay, it's beautiful. It's All right, you, view, you put a different lens on. Yeah. Okay, That's where the sweet science. That's it. I got to ask you straight okay. real quick. Is Anthony Joshua going to avenge his loss? I, I saw him on the show freestyling. He was all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did came off. Yeah. Um, I didn't think he was going to have a loss. But I, I wasn't that familiar uh, with um, Ruiz. Andy, Ruiz, Andy Ruiz. Ruiz, Andy Ruiz at that time. I'm not, damn, that's fucked up, because uh, I'm a, damn, why you put me on the <laughs> oh, spot? Oh, like, you a fight fan. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a fight fan. <laughs> oh, um, big but, time. But, but I'm an emotional dude. Like, I love the Andy Ruiz story. I hope they do like make the, Rocky the Mexican Rocky. Uh, I hope they do make that film. That dude seems like he's an amazing, beautiful dude who worked hard, under the radar. People weren't paying attention to him. He stepped up to the challenge. And he delivered. Yeah. He made uh, history. Yeah. He made history. And he kind of exposed Anthony Joshua um, in many ways that I think a lot of you guys already felt, right? Um, I don't want to say I felt that. I just We all knew that he was kind of green and he, yeah. he actually got to the top very quickly. Yeah. And he might have needed a little bit more season and, and a little bit more time, you know. But who doesn't love that, that Rocky story? Yeah. Even, the Zone did a, a documentary called, uh, what's it called? One one, one night, night. Uh-huh. it's called one it night, out. and it really shows that Mexican Rocky story. Yeah, but that fight could have and it, Anthony Joshua dropped him with a left hook. It could have ended. It could have went right. the other way. Right. It, anything could happen. Well, I don't want to say exposed. Win. I'm like I said. I'm gonna pick Anthony Joshua yeah. to avenge that loss with a big knockout win. Uh-huh. So I, I, I agree. Six I, agree. I just think it's a mental thing. Yeah. You know, he just got to come prepared mentally. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching the back and forth with um, Jamel Charlo. Is it, it his next fight? Who's gonna win that? I just like the leading oh. up to it and the the name calling. I know it's super Harrison. petty oh. and Harry, yeah, him and Harrison from Detroit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who is gonna win this next fight? That uh, if you would have asked me a year ago, I would have said Jamel. But it's a toss up now because the first fight was so close. 
but a lot of people think Jamel actually won that fight, but they yeah. they took it from him. I would lean towards Jamel Charlo. I, but it depends because he's so emotional that I'll, you never know how that's going to play out in the ring, being so wow. emotional and being so angry. I'll pick Harrison. Mm. You gonna pick Harrison? Yeah, yeah. you gotta explain. Okay. You gotta explain. <laughs> no, I just wanna go against you. I know it. I know it. See? <laughs> See? I know it. I'm gonna right. pick Charlo on that. Um I my my logical mind is going for Joshua over uh Ruiz. 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 Uh, but my heart is still with you know, Andy. I'm just happy that Andy accomplished something yeah. no other person right, has so done. He's already accomplished it. Now okay, it's time okay, for AJ okay. to get All his right, stuff Andy, back. you got your money. <laughs> Two yeah, paychecks. Okay, AJ, I think AJ is going to come back, and then eventually we're going to see the AJ Joshua, the Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder fight we've all been waiting to see. Yes. And you taking Charlo for the next I'm taking, I never go against the Charlo, Charlo brother. They, because, another citizen. Because they came by our show Day one. years ago when folks and you guys knew, but the general public didn't know who those yep. brothers were. Right. You know, and they when we went to broadcast in Houston they years ago, they, they always come through. by our shows and yep. support us. Yep. Same with Spence, Earl Spence Jr. Mm -hmm. But uh, that could be flipped, though, because it's really like you showing the love to these guys. Absolutely. You know, that's all yes. I hear that's about is true. you showing love yeah. to the guys when nobody. I see people on your show that I know. Nobody knows. Yeah, and in I the thank you world. for that because mm -hmm. you pushing nobody the sport knows. forward. Yeah. And that's my objective. It was never to kind of come do what y'all do. And I always say when Randy and them wanted me to come, I said, I don't do what y'all do, but right. I love what you do. Right. Right. And here's my platform to help promote what you do. Right. And it, it's a mutually been, it, I understand it was showing them love. Right. But Crawford, Earl Spence Jr., Sean Porter, Sean Porter yep. Danny Garcia, even Mayweather, yep. um, they all come back yep. right. and that's the part I appreciate that's right. a fact and they respect obviously yeah. the platform but your knowledge about the sport too because that's one thing about fighters they don't like talking to too many people that don't really understand the sport mm -hmm. so the fact that you do that's why they come back man I pre coming from you I, I made it even Mike Tyson <laughs> co-hosted this show before <laughs> so you gotta be a guest uh, on yeah. our show though. I would love to be a guest on your show okay and Monday I, pencil them in pencil them in <laughs> Monday pencil that's in. it and I, I don't do any I, don't, I, don't, no. I just like watching people shit but I would right. love to be a guest on your show man I appreciate I, that. congratulations uh, 12 to 3 p.m. even today right Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, right. um, um, channel 156, the Ock and Barack show. These guys are the truth. Make sure you check them out. If you want to reach them on social media, you can at Boxing Box with Ock. That's W I T H A K. And that's Boxing Bully on Instagram. All right, we got uh, Celebrity Wire up next. Yeah, and Scooter Braun for the first time is speaking out against Taylor Swift. <laughs>